Drug cartels have the Border Patrol shaking their heads, scratching their heads, questioning what is going on with these drones. We're talking about weaponized drones that are being used in Mexico and also potentially in the United States. And we really don't know who is running them because they're drones. It's hard to track that. I want to share this story with you today from USA Today. It says that the drug cartels, they attack enemies and they spread terror with weaponized drones in the U.S. and Mexico. So this was posted yesterday by Carol Suarez. Short read. We're going to talk about this story, and then we're going to take a look at something that's going on in Tucson. And we've got this situation where there was a drone flying around super fast in a way that was it seems like it's highly modified, that they're having problems sort of keeping pace with its range and its speed and how much battery power it has, and they really can't find out what's going on with it. So the Internet is sort of abuzz with this. If you're not familiar with, you know, the aerospace niche online there's a lot of people who are very interested in this space they study the skies they're watching radar uh you know websites where they can track planes they know all the call signs and where everybody's going and they know government you know airplanes oh you know cb 2740 was flying around nevada today that's weird because the cb 2470 is the you know special reconnaissance plane that the the fbi bought two years ago right they like it's that detailed and so they have this whole form of people now trying to figure out what was going on with this drone where did it come from we have Air, Air Force bases here in Arizona, and it, it, this, this drone may have crossed over into the airspace. And so there's pretty significant questions that are happening here. And first and foremost, let's start with Mexico. So it began as a routine operation. Mexican police were clearing blockades placed by organized crime groups in Mexico, a western Mexico town. Suddenly, authorities said a drone flew over, dropping a gunpowder bomb and wounding two members of the Mejoacan state police in the arms and legs. So they dropped a gunpowder bomb. The attack in April underscored an emerging danger in the international flight fight against illegal drugs, weaponized drones. Did you ever see that Black Mirror episode with the bees? There was an episode on Black Mirror where they have these bees. We know there's, there's a, a sort of a bee problem that exists right now. They're not pollinating different plants and people are wondering where are the bees going it feels like their population is declining so black mirror is a series on netflix and in this series there was one episode where they have a company that is solving this bee crisis which is a real problem so they create these drones these little micro bee drones and they just go around and this company just kind of pollinates them they send them out there and all the wilderness and greenery comes back because the bees are back doing their work well, something happens and somebody kind of hacks one of these bees and these bees are pretty powerful so they can actually sort of kill you they can like fly into your eye and you know jack around your brain they can go into your ear and go up your nose and go in your mouth or other orifices and somebody takes control of these bees and they have these controls of these swarms now they can just kind of you know get into your house you can go lock yourself in a house but you can get a bee in through the roof and under the doors and whatever so all these bees are coming and it's a horrifying uh, episode which may be real coming up soon. So the bloody and powerful Jalisco new generation cartel and its rival have upgraded their arsenals. They're using drones to bomb enemies, posing a growing threat to Mexico and U.S. citizens and allowing more drugs to flow into the USA. Drones are a part of the cartel's larger strategy to arm themselves like rogue militaries. We're going to hear from Derek Maltz. He's a former agent in charge of the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration Special Operations Division, he says, quote, I've been a strong advocate of designating the Mexican cartels as terrorist groups because they're acting like terrorist groups. They're equipped like terrorist groups. They're distributing record levels of poisonous drugs in America. They're going to use the latest and greatest technology to defeat their adversaries, go after the police, and fight for territory that gives them better routes to funnel drugs into the USA, he says. So this is what we're looking at. Uh, you can see here in this image, we've got several different drones, decent sized drones, right? These aren't the ones that you just kind of, you know, uh, fly around your backyard with your GoPro on it. These are significant. We've got, you know, some nice weight here. They can carry a, a moderate size payload. We know here Mexican drug cartels use drones to further their aims. These drones were seized by the attorney general of Mexico in 2020. So they're, they're getting pretty sophisticated with a lot of this stuff. In an exclusive interview, Part of the USA Today, one rookie drone operator with Carteles Unidos, who did not want to give his name given the cartel's activities, said his organization has about 100 drones. Cartel members receive training on their use, he said, from a man nicknamed Lord of the Skies. Ooh. 
He's been training us since last year. We have many drone models. They're not too sophisticated, but they can carry a considerable amount of explosives. He said the drones come legally from the U.S. through groups in Mihoacan that support us and have legitimate money to buy the drones. The man said that they deploy the drones to keep watch over territory and attack another rival. He said that neither the organization nor the, their opposing, uh, opponents use the drones for trafficking drugs because it's not worth the money or the effort. Drones are an inefficient way to carry large volume of drugs into the U.S. Yeah, you just you don't need to use the drones because the borders are just wide open. You can just drive right in there, so nobody even cares. Uh, another organization, cartel, which is known for kidnappings, torture, and murders, is blamed for the spread of fentanyl, one of Americans, uh, America's deadliest illicit drugs. So they take fentanyl in through clandestine, clandestine laboratories. Mexican Secretary of Defense Luis Sandoval blamed a cartel for the drone attack against police in April. He said the person who used the drone was arrested, so they found the guy. The municipality containing the uh, area where the attack occurred become a strategic hub for the production of meth, the birthplace of another cartel leader called El Mencho, powerful guy. Shortly after the attack, AP reported that somebody visited Aguilia offering a mass for residents walking through the streets with an image of Christ to symbolically reclaim the roadways where dozens of bodies, some decapitated, have been left in recent months. The drone attack was one of many in the past few years. During a briefing in Mexico, Sandoval said the attacks are concerning but haven't been as effective as the cartels would like. Well, they're working on it. Authorities are concerned the cartels could get a hold of more deadly devices, and they worry that the cartels may step up efforts to smuggle drugs. Some say that they use this tactic to bring marijuana and other drugs into the USA. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Why would you bring marijuana? It is legal in most parts of the country, or many parts of the country, not most. But you would think that you'd want to sort of bring in high-density drugs, right? Stuff that you can really condense down, then cut up once it lands across the border. But that's not drug trafficking advice. We have drones here. Used by Mexican cartels, often carry explosives like these. You can see here, you know, they look like sort of improvised coconut bombs. Experts in Mexico and the USA worry more militarized cartels will mean more casualties. Last month, government officials from both nations, they held talks in Mexico. Kamala Harris wasn't there, though. The ministry said that two countries' priorities include reducing arms, narcotics trafficking, and the like. Over the years, various strategies have been used against organized crime with no success. The so-called war on drugs has led to tens of thousands of deaths. Cartels grow stronger. They're better able to fuel America's drug epidemic. Good reason why the drug war is so stupid. The epidemic kept taking more lives. According for, from the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention, more than 81,000 people died from drug overdoses in the USA in the 12-month period ending in May 2020. Okay, 81,000, the highest number of overdose deaths ever recorded in 12 months. They're killing our citizens as we've never seen in the history of the country, said Maltz, which is exactly right. Right. They, 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 I mean, this is, this is a, a big problem. There are a lot of kids and adults, everybody, fentanyl and the opioids, they're indiscriminate. They just take everybody. So kind of a big, kind of a big problem. Now, let's take a look at what's going on in Tucson. Very interesting story. So we're going to do a little bit more reading, but we've got some interesting... I want to show you this first before we get there. This is some of the radar maps that we're going to be looking at. So we can take a look down here. We're going to look... You can see this sort of flight pattern circling around here, uh, squiggling around Tucson, and then making these big loops to come back in. So this is what I'm talking about. We have a lot of people who are tracking this, and they really can't figure out what is going on. So let's start with this story. It's over from The Drive, written by Brett Tingley. It says, new details emerge on the highly modified drone, in quotes, that outran Tucson police helicopters, okay, over Tucson. Not other drone operators. Helicopters. Plural. All right. Last month, Warzone, which is one of these websites that sort of monitors this stuff, reported on a bizarre drone encounter that occurred in the skies above Tucson. According to reports, February 9th, 10.30 p.m. at night, helicopter belonging to U.S. Customs and Border Patrol encountered what has been described by K-Load's Dan Marys, who interviewed an FBI agent assigned to the case as a highly modified drone. Right? We've been talking a lot about UFOs and stuff on this channel, too. The government is having a report come out this month about UFOs. So maybe, maybe it's just these, highly modified drones. Another helicopter operated by Tucson PD was called in to help track and identify the drone, but the drone was able to evade both of them. Remains unidentified. Shortly after the incident was disclosed, FBI released a statement asking for help from the public. In the days since they first reported on this story, individuals have reached out with new information that adds further context. 
source with direct knowledge of the incident, told the war zone they believe the drone was highly unlikely to be battery powered based on altitude, distance, speed at which it flew. Right. So, you know, it's it, it's very fast and it's been flying for a long time. The source also stated it seems as though the drone was equipped with an infrared camera based on how it was able to dynamically maneuver, including in relation to the helicopters chasing it despite the low level of ambient light at the time of the incident. So they really don't know what the capabilities are of this thing because they can't follow it. They also added that it, the only logical that it was looking towards DMs, which is the Davis Monthan Air Force Base flight line, okay, based on its location. So we got this really fast drone that police helicopters can't keep up with. It can dynamically maneuver, might have infrared capabilities, highly modified, very, very fast, can fly very high and can travel for a very long distance. And it's taking a look at an Air Force Base flying around, circling around that Air Force Base. So the FBI is concerned about this, as is Border Patrol, and for good reason. The same source also tells us that the unusual drone was first spotted near a complex of fuel tanks just west of the runway at the U.S. Air Force Davis Mon Monthan Air Force Base. Well within the Class C airspace that surrounds the base, Class C airspace is defined as airspace from the surface to 4,000 feet above the airport surrounding those areas. The FAA states that for flights near airports and control space, drone operators must receive an airspace authorization prior to operation, but they didn't. In a statement, the FBI wrote that the drone violated U.S. code, unsafe operation of manned aircraft. FBI called the drone's actions illegal and extremely dangerous, right? Because what if you have a fighter pilot taking off at that time and you got a you know unknown drone flying through the airspace and they're not communicating with each other? Big problem. Could lose a you know tens of millions of dollar aircraft and a human life, and cause a very significant ordeal milita militarily speaking all right here is the statement from the fbi that they're seeking information on the alleged illegal drone activity that was taking place in tucson and they posted this not too long ago may 20th fbi seeking information we know february 9th 10 30 over the next few hours multiple law enforcement agencies worked to locate the drone's operator but were unsuccessful. The drone appeared to launch from an area about five miles south of Tucson, flew across Tucson and over Morana, which is not close. I've, you know, I've, been, I've, driven, I've driven there. I've been to court in both places many times. No one was injured. No other similar incidents have been reported. In 2018, FAA made it illegal to do all this stuff. Anyone flying a drone prohibited by law can face federal charges. We got all that. So if you know anything, call the Arizona FBI at 623-466-1999. So that is a Arizona phone number, of course. So we'll continue on. I want to show you what Mike D actually wrote about the incident. So as I said, there's a, for, there's, a, there's a forum that sort of exists for a lot of these conversations where this stuff is discussed. There's a forum post here, and we're going to read through what he said here because it's interesting. Now, the description of the drone's initial observed location would appear to match the location of a terminal owned by Kinder Morgan, an energy company, some 40% of natural gas, so it could be them. While drones are used in pipeline and tank inspections, the Kinder Morgan... The unique nature of what was and has been reported says it doesn't think that it was them, right? It doesn't appear that they were doing any professional work. It feels like somebody was you know, tinkering around with the drone at 1030 at night. The drone's initial observed location was also largely confirmed by a post from another individual on jetcareers.com, which describes itself as an online community of airline corporate professional pilots, including air traffic controllers, dispatchers, and mechanics. They posted there, somebody named Mike D, on February 10th, Describe this says last night there was one just east of Katus, about 1200 feet AGL cruising eastbound. Don't know what any of that means, but sounds like flight language. It passed about 30 feet away, co altitude with a police helicopter flying the opposite direction. Hilo made a 180 turn to give chase. The quadcopter was described as approximately five feet long by about three feet wide, which is big, right? That's big with a single green flashing LED light. It continued east into KDMA's airspace and began orbiting the base over the parallel taxiway near the fighter jet ramp. TUS and DM towers were unaware of it, as was U-90, FAA approach controllers. The operator apparently realized by this time that the drone was being followed because it then proceeded northwest at high speed and climbing with the helo and another law enforcement helo in trail. Copter began to climb and flew out of the TUS area about 50 miles to the northwest of town into the middle of the nowhere desert out by the mine west of KAVQ. It was last seen climbing through 14,000 feet and into the undercast where it disappeared. The helos remained in VMC, visual meteorological conditions. They couldn't go up to 14,000 feet. And Wung hung around for about an hour to see if it would reappear descending. 
or if there were any vehicles driving through the middle of nowhere as either the operator or someone to potentially recover it. Neither appeared. U-90 informed their FAA chain of command about it. That's as far as I've heard so far. Hmm. Got a pretty miraculous little drone happening here that the government doesn't know what it is. The radar track of the Tucson Police Department helicopter that pursued the drone is uh, detailed here below. Took off from Tucson International Airport, flew towards the edge of the airspace near Davis, Montan, and it was followed the drone northwest away from the city before circling back. Sources have confirmed this was indeed a police helicopter sent to aid the CPB AS-3350. So, you know, that, that's what I'm talking about. So sounds like this was actually the helicopter that was chasing this thing around. And if you look in here, if you, if you see this, I really can't zoom in here on this, but you'll notice it, it, it looks like this. It's a squiggly. It looks like they were doing this the whole way down here for this whole section here. They're just going loop, loop-de-loops. Round and around we go. All the way through. Here is another image. The Class C airspace surrounding the Tucson International Airport and Davis Monthan Air Force Base is all right here. And then we can see that they were right in that area, right? Sort of circling right above that. This is a, there is a precedent of drug cartels using drones and to bring munitions and drugs across the border. It's been speculated this may have been the case in this instant, but Tucson is over 50 miles from the border. Right? It's not close. In addition, it makes little sense to why smugglers would have an interest in an energy storage depot or an Air Force base. There was also plenty of experimental aircraft activity in the area. Multiple airstrips of varying sizes in close proximity. Raytheon Missiles and Defense also operates a facility south of Tucson. But this type of unscheduled flight close to a major metro area, even over an airbase, and up to into flight levels where planes fly, above where a normal helicopter can fly, is far from typical when it comes to experimental aircraft testing. In fact, it's outright illegal behavior according to the FAA's own rules. Whatever the case may be, the drone reported proximity to both an international airport and an air force base is worrying. The drone's reported altitude and the fact that it outran two law enforcement helicopters is also concerning, given the increasing threat drones pose to critical infrastructure and defense installations. We will continue to investigate this strange incident and we'll report back when we find out more. So I would definitely go follow that website if you're interested in anything more there. Because it, uh, it is a doozy, isn't it? So let's see if I can get some of these questions to work. And if so, we will take them. Otherwise, we'll just wrap up for the day. Let's see what we've got here. All right. So, all right. So here, here my, my, uh, my screen here, of course, is still doing the, the squiggly circle. So we're going to reconvene and figure out what happened with that so if anybody has any other solutions to to what we're trying to do here that would be great let me see faith is sending this one here all right so we're just going to wrap it up here folks we'll figure it out tomorrow so uh anyway i apologize for that it's extremely frustrating for me when our tech doesn't work but what can you do about it so we're going to be back here same place same time tomorrow doing the same show hopefully with functional technology i think the problem is when I put a bunch of videos in there, it sort of screws up the file and it just doesn't sync properly. So I may have to come up with a different solution for the videos, but uh, we got through one segment today. Okay, we're gonna get back and, and work on the other ones. Thank you for your patience and I apologize for wasting everybody's time. We're gonna figure it out and be back tomorrow. So a couple quick reminders before we get up and out of here. We have some links in the description for some other channels that are down below if you wanna follow us. We have a crypto channel. There is a non-live channel where I put stuff that I don't record live. It gives me a little bit more sort of you know, flexibility and I can you know, work on my intro, nailing the intro and get it a little bit better at my production value. So go check that out if you want to do that. Otherwise, one last thing before we get out of here is that I am a criminal defense lawyer. That is really what we do on a daily basis at our law firm in Arizona. And so if you happen to know anybody in Scottsdale that is facing a criminal charge, we would love the opportunity to help. We have a whole team of people and we're all dedicated to helping good people facing criminal charges to find safety, clarity, and hope in their cases and in their lives. And so if there's anything we can do to help anybody facing a criminal charge like a misdemeanor, a felony case, a domestic violence, DUIs, disorderly conduct, anything and everything in between, even traffic offenses. We have reckless driving and criminal speeding here in Arizona. It's kind of bizarre. But there is a lot that we can do to help. Many people think that it's kind of you know open and shut anytime you're charged with a crime. And that's really not the reality. There's a lot of work that we can do to help put people in good positions. And so if you happen to know anybody in the state of Arizona that needs a little bit of that help, we would love the opportunity to provide that. And so we offer free case evaluations. We offer payment plans, financial services. We can, we can work a, a lot of stuff out. So it's really worth your time. We want to make sure that 
you leave our office better than you found us. And we want to do everything we can to help you with that. So uh, that is it for me, my friends. We're going to be back here same time, same place tomorrow. Hope to see you here. It's going to be at 4 p.m. Arizona time, 5 p.m. Mountain, 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. on the East Coast for that one Florida man out there. Everybody have a tremendous night's sleep. Rest well. I'll see you right back here tomorrow. Bye-bye.